Now in the world of AI model development, you blink and you're gonna miss a new announcement. We've just had GPT 4.1 announced. Now the confusing thing is we've already had GPT 4.5. We're expecting GPT 5. Now we're going back to GPT 4.1. And the funny thing is that GPT 4.1 looks as if in many areas it's better than GPT 4.5. Confused? Well, let me explain. So the key with all these things is these models take time to train and they don't just train one model and then say, right, what we're going to do next. They've obviously got lots of research going on, different ideas, different ways of doing things, different ways of representing the data internally and the different ways of training and the training set. And it's just holo going on. And GPT 4.1 has come from a different branch than GPT uh, 4.5. And as I said, in many of the areas, it's actually stronger. Now, even uh, OpenAI are joking. They know their naming is a bit of a mess. You've got, you know, GPT-4, GPT-4, O, GPT-4.1, GPT-4.5, O-1, O-3, Mini. Uh, and, you know, the list just goes on and on. And they are going to bring those more into a streamlined uh, system with GPT-5. I, I guess that's what's going to happen. But at the moment, this model that is come from GPT-4, the 4.1, is actually turned out to be quite strong in many, many ways, stronger than GPT-4.5. Of course, GPT-4.5 is very expensive to run. So, you know, they've tried different things and they've come up with a model that's good performance, but also has lower costs. And one of the OpenAI employees said, well, if you think about this, if it's GPT 4.10, of course, you can put as many zeros as you like after that, then 4.10 is greater than 4.5. Bit of an inside joke, I guess. Uh, but we could think of this as GPT 4.10 rather than 4.5. Anyway, what I'm going to do is go through some of the benchmarks that uh, OpenAI have given us and then we'll actually do a demo. Now the key in all of this is that GPT 4.1 is cheap to run. Cheap for them to run in terms of the hardware and the GPUs and all that, and cheap for uh, users to access. Now at the moment it's only available via API, which means you have to write programs to access it or use tools that can access it. That's what I'm gonna do. It's not something you get in the ton of chat GPT web interface. It may turn up there soon. I don't know with, with these things. As I say, you blink and you're going to miss it. But today, when I'm making this video, you have to do it via a, a program. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, but it's cheap. OK, let's have a look at the benchmarks and some of the numbers that OpenAI quoted. OK, so let's just talk a bit about GPT 4.1. Uh, these are the, all the numbers coming from uh, OpenAI itself. The important thing is here for uh, the SWE bench, so this is a coding benchmark, you can see that GPT 4.1 is the highest, okay? Better than O1, better than O3 mini, better than GPT 4.5, it's actually 55%. Uh, so they have say they've tuned this one specifically for very, very good coding tasks. And even GPT 4.1 mini does a very uh, good job, a reasonable job, though not as good as GPT 4.0. Uh, oh, so there we go. That's what they say for coding. Now, if they're talking about the long context, these models have a context now of a million. And so, of course, the question is, how well does it know that whole context? Is it very strong at just the beginning of it? And then it just becomes kind of noise to the LLM. Well, this is a, a benchmark that they've created that shows you the accuracy of kind of working through that uh, prompt. Now here, the important one is 4.5 is this one here. Okay, it looks like quite low 50% accuracy there. And then 128k is where they drop out on 4.5. But look at this much, much higher on 4.1. And it remains strong, stronger than 4.5, all the way to the end, to the right to the end of that huge context window. And this is another benchmark models have to answer questions about charts and scientific papers. And the interesting thing is here, ChatGPT 4.5 gets 55%, whereas ChatGPT 4.1 gets 57%. Uh, so stronger than GPT 4.5, stronger than O1. So a very good showing from 4.1 here. And then the MMMU, a model answers questions 
containing charts, diagrams, and so on. So again, another benchmark from that uh, OpenAI have run. And the key thing here is uh, GPT 4.5 gets 75% and GPT 4.1 gets 75%. Now, why this is all important is that GPT 4.1 is really cheap to run. They've done a lot of work to make it cheap to run in terms of their costs, but also in terms of the API costs, so that it's uh, you get the same results for less money. And of course, that's absolutely brilliant. And even when you run GPT 4.1 mini, we're finding very, very good results here, uh, better than GPT 4.0, for example. However, it's not always the case that GPT 4.1 is better. For example, in this instruction following evaluation, you can see that GPT 4.5 gets 54%, whereas GPT 4.1 gets 49%. But if you compare that to GPT 4.0, then it's much, much bigger, a huge leap there. And a similar result was what you get with 01 or 03 mini. So again, because of the cost, uh, a lower cost for functionality that's very, very similar, but it's not the leader necessarily in all benchmarks. And then we also got this uh, IF eval, models must generate answers that comply with various instructions. Again, GPT 4.5, 88%, GPT 4.1, 87%. And 01 and 03 mini can get up into the 90s. So uh, not always the best model, but again, just re-emphasizing so cheap in terms of API access. Okay, so that's the open AI stuff. Now let's go to the command line. I'm gonna use a tool and we're gonna actually interrogate GPT 4.1 using some of my questions that I've used in several of my videos to see what it can do. Okay, so here I am over on the command line now because this is only an API model, which means it's not part of the ChatGPT web interface. We're gonna use it, uh, access it using Python. And there's a great tool that I'm gonna be using, which is called just LLM. It's from a dataset. Uh, .io, and it allows you to access large language models via the command line. They've done all the hard work in interfacing it and all that working out with the keys and all the stuff you want to do. So I'm going to use that now. So let me show you the first kind of one we're going to do, and that is my standard Alice question. So you do LLM minus M for model OpenAI GPT 4.1. Alice has five brothers. She also has three sisters. How many sisters does Alice's brother have? It should be four is the correct answer. Some LLMs get it wrong and make it three. Let's see what it says here. It does all the calculations. Each of Alice's brothers has four sisters. That is absolutely correct. Now, I'm not going to go through all of my questions because ChatGPT 4.1 gets them right look at my previous videos about that. I'm going to ask it the more tricky one. So the next tricky one is the hourglass question, but the harder of the two hourglass questions. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know the other question. So you have two hourglasses, one that measures seven minutes and the other measures 11 minutes. Using these two hourglasses, can you measure exactly 15 minutes? If so, explain the steps involved. Now, uh, I'm not expecting it necessarily to get it right. The bigger models like 01 and 03 mini get this right. Let's see whether it gets it right this time. So what's it saying? It's giving me all the steps. Now it's giving me a quick reference. Okay. And uh, so what it's basically saying is by starting both and flipping seven minutes, then you'll reach the thing. When you flip the 11 minute at 11 minutes, you simply measure four minutes more with the seven hour glass since it was flipped at seven minutes and runs out at the 14 mark. After the seven minute runs out at the 14 mark is the 15 mark. Look at that. Runs out at the 14 minute mark is the 15 minute mark. Well, no. <laughs> when one more minute passes, stop. So look, it's just assuming we can measure a minute from somewhere. So it hasn't got it right. And that's fair enough. The bigger models do. The bigger models from OpenAI do. But in this particular case, it didn't. It would be interesting to see what ChatGPT 4.5 does in this case. Okay, so the model name is a GPT 4.5 Preview. Let's see what that can do uh, and see whether it gives us a better answer. Okay, so I've read through the text as it was generating it. It's basically the wrong answer. Uh, it's got, you know, the 14 minute mark here and then the 15 minute mark again. So it didn't get it much right either. So GPT 4.1 uh, is certainly doing as well as GPT 4.5, even if it's getting it wrong, it's certainly doing uh, as well. 
Now, as I've mentioned, this is good at programming. So I've got a thing here, write a Python program. It takes the phrase, Gary explains, counts the number of alphabetic characters, multiplies that by seven. So it's a whole bunch of instructions that it needs to do. Uh, and so let's see whether it can create the code uh, to do that. Now, if you use the minus X parameter on LLM tool here, it will just give you the code that the, uh, t that the response contains. So that can be quite useful x for extract okay there's the code let's run it okay so here's the code we're looking for four five as the answer and there we go four five so it was able to produce some python code there that followed a number of steps quite easily now it can also deal with images so i've got this infographic here about the sinclair zx81 it low cost 1k of ram and so on and so on and i ask it uh, to describe this uh, image as if it was shakespeare so describe this image like Shakespeare, minus A gives it the attachment of the file I've got there in the same directory. And hopefully what we're going to get back is some, there we go, low before the standard device of Marvel, Sinclair 6, they went clad in black and crimson print, its countenance humble yet so there you go. So that has managed to do that well. So it's understood it's a ZX81. Let's have a look at what else. The low cost it's managed to say. It's got uh, 1,000 mighty bytes. That's the 1K. 1981 uh, home computer. So it's, it's recognised that, read the text from it, and produced that in the style of Shakespeare without any problem whatsoever. Now this it was sent in by one of my viewers on the YouTube here, Craig Stepp. Uh, he said there's very difficult to read the face values of these dies and I haven't found a, a uh, LLM that can do it yet so I'm not expecting this to pass here but it's good to do the test so we're going to ask it what are the values of the top faces of, of these uh, dice. So like before we include the dice JPEG as the uh, image attached to this request and let's come back and see what it says. Six, five, three. Well, there are five dices, first of all, so that's wrong. Uh, there is no six, so we're wrong already. So there you go. It didn't get it right. I didn't expect it to, but there you go. Just shows you that it is uh, multimodal. You can send in pictures and ask it to do things. This really is pr proving to be one of the most difficult tests at the moment. Now, my final test, uh, again, one that hasn't really worked anywhere, really, uh, even 01, not and so on. Your task is to build a chess engine that communicates using basic universal chess interface. Uh, the engine should support the key commands. And then I give it a big, long, uh, functional uh, specification of all the things it needs to do. I'm not just saying write a chess engine. I'm actually giving it a good set of uh, uh, clues here, a specification to tell it what to do. In case it does produce some code and it does compile, let's count how much code it is. So 450 lines of code there. The make file does run and it does support UCI. And this is what most of the uh, LLMs are able to do. Let's see if it actually plays a good game or not. Okay, so we're going to play a new game against Chess GPT 4.1. That's the version there. Now let's see what happens. Okay, it's moved that knight. I'll move my knight. It's moved castle over to one. Okay, it, it can do that. So far it's a... All right, I'm going to try and take that. Ah, now when it comes up like that, it means it's made an illegal move. And in fact, here we see a message here. Black has made an illegal move. So it does start to play pretty impressive. Uh, gets a couple of moves going, but then it falls apart because it doesn't uh, doesn't play a legal move. So <laughs> that's probably the best I've seen up until now, actually, because most of them fail the legal illegal move on the first move. So what we got two, three moves, then we got an illegal move. So, but there you go. We're not there yet, but uh, that's uh, a progress. Okay, so there you go, GPT 4.1, very, very capable, cheaper to run, cheaper to access over the API. And so that's good for everybody all around. Obviously, there is more stuff coming, but this is probably a better choice than GPT 4.5. You're going to get just as good of a result or very close to the same results for way less money uh, when you're using the API. So that's good news. Do tell me what you think in the comments below. Love to hear your thoughts. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.